checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. First impression of the docu-series, and this is based off of the only thing that we knew is we'd seen the trailer and there were some early reviews that came out that were kind of negative on the thing. And then we saw Vince McMahon frustrated at his portrayal that he tweeted out on, uh, what was it, Monday night. Uh, so did did that jive with what you thought uh, uh, for the first four episodes? What, what what did you think? Well, one thing, and I, we talked about this earlier, I was told that it's probably not a good idea to judge this until seeing episode six mm -hmm. but all of them so i don't want to judge anything other than my thing that i think i know i told you and i've told other people before this ever even aired was that i expected that the people who hated vince mcmahon would think that this was too easy on him and the people who loved vince mcmahon would be absolutely furious about the documentary because they would think that it was unfair to him and when I watched it, I thought that's probably going to be the reaction. It's mm -hmm. going to be across those lines. If you like Vince McMahon, you're going to think they did a hatch job on him, which they didn't. If you hate Vince McMahon, you're going to think that they were too easy on him. Um, I mean, there's points where they could have been harder on him without mm -hmm. doubt, but I would not, you know, you couldn't be too, I guess you could be too easy on him, but, but this is not the documentary that's too easy on him. Um, you know, there were a few there was not anything new and breaking that people who've studied Vince McMahon, um, you know, would find out there were, a few, I mean, there were two or three things that I learned that were new, that were minor things. Um, one, not so minor, which would be Kay Koplovitz saying that in 1994, when Vince was on trial, if he'd been convicted, they were going to kick him off if he'd been convicted. I don't know if that's true. Um, she did say that. Um, and I was very surprised. I know, I only know of one station, which is KTVU in San Francisco, that that dropped WWE because of the steroid, um, you know, thing. They actually that is the reason they dropped the show. Um, but I think they were the only um, station in the country that did that. Uh, so um, for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, WWE in I mean, Raw was not if we go to 1984. It was it was a successful show. It was not the success it would be five years later. Um, WWE in 1994 was, you know, at a low point, um, you know, business wise. So it is possible. And I do know factually in 1997 that, um, you know, the decision was made to drop Tuesday Night Boxing and Monday Night Raw. Um, Barry Diller made that decision. He didn't want them on USA anymore. And before the ax fell, raw suddenly turned its ratings around and they decided, well, they did cancel Tuesday night fights, but yeah. they did not cancel Monday night raw. Well, going back to that time frame 94 with business being down as well, you could justify just being like, why are we dealing with this stuff if it's not even doing as good as it as it did before? Uh, when it when it came to thinking of, of dropping it, if Vince did get get uh, locked up or did did lose the the trial. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, that's an interesting thing. At the time, syndication was still in '94. Syndication was still more more important than than cable. That changed over the next really year or two. So it would not have been a death blow, but it would have been a it would have been a bad blow. Um, they probably would have gotten there's so many cable stations, they probably would have gotten TV somewhere. Um, they were strong enough. Uh, but you know, does that change this year wrestling? Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. You know, and there's a lot of different things in that documentary where if they'd gone different ways, history would be different. You know, if 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 you know, um, if 1992 and the stuff that broke in 1992 happened in 2024, um, it would have been a disaster for the company, you know, a complete disaster, far more than than Vince leaving was, you mm -hmm. know, Vince leaving was a was, you know, certainly bad PR for the company. But business wise, it was beneficial to the company. So now know. Vince said that he saw an early cut 
and he didn't think that they were fair and they were using producer tricks to make him look bad. Did you see any of that in the first four episodes? Not producer tricks, no. I think some of it was, um, you know, Vince would say something and somebody would correct him. Um, I mean, that was kind of your role in the whole thing. You were kind of the gatekeeper of the truth in at least the first two episodes. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's what he's referring to. I don't know. Um, you know, editing tricks. You know, I mean, he says what he says and some of it's accurate and some of it isn't. I thought, I will say this. I thought, I thought Bret Hart was very good. Um, he could be a little over the top, though, at the same time. At, at certain points. I think that when they recounted Survivor Series, I did think because they spent so much time on it, I thought it was, it, it really, they needed to, they needed, you can't discuss Survivor Series unless you're going to do like five seconds on it and just pass it through. It's like, whatever. If you're going to do a discussion on Survivor Series, Brett's contract and the fact that he had creative control has to be part of it and when it's not you're basically giving people a story of Bret Hart you know Bret Hart refused to do business he refused to lose to Shawn Michaels and everything like that and it's like it is obviously a lot more complicated than that and that also wasn't his last day and they also you know could have you know I I thought that there were I thought that that was not um I thought there were three there were two or three points in the Bret Hart Survivor Series story that needed to be there that weren't there. Um, so if I had like, but I mean, most of, you know, most of what I watched, I'm watching going like, yeah, that's what happened. I didn't, I didn't see any inaccuracies. I, you know, got, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, okay. as far as, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I guess the Hogan Andre story, but I mean, yeah, I know the, 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 all that Hogan stuff was like all the stuff that we didn't like from the Andre doc was, he just repeated himself in, in this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's interesting because um, Hogan. One of the things Hogan has always denied, always denied that he was the person who snitched to Vince about Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Yeah. And here he absolutely said, "Oh yeah, I went right to Vince." And you know? didn't didn't he kind of also admit to agreeing to testify against Vince in a specific way, and then not? doing what he said he was going to do at the same time yeah yeah with the go he, he told that he told the feds what he was going to say and then he went on trial then in the trial he said the exact opposite which i remember just looking at the faces of those guys when hogan was answering those questions and it was like they did not expect this and vince was still mad at hogan i mean afterwards for doing it it's like vince he saved your ass yeah hogan was this hogan was the star witness because he was the one who was going to prove the distribution and then he just you know, bailed on and Hogan, you know, people don't know, you know, like they, they Hogan did say like, you know, that they threatened basically to lock him up. What happened was they had, they had a case against Hogan. Mm -hmm. um, and it was for distribution, you know, from way, way, way back. And they didn't want Hogan. They wanted Vince. Yeah. So it was basically, you know, you're, we'll give you immunity to testify against Vince he took the immunity. He got the immunity. And then at that point, he did not testify against Vince um, and save Vince in that trial. But you know what? I mean, even if Hogan had testified the way um, the way they expected, the reality is, is that they didn't have venue and it still would have been thrown out. I mean, if Hogan had said what like they didn't they had a close case if two or three things had happened differently, you know, and the key one is Linda McMahon being tipped off. Um, yeah, you know, which said, which also was not, you know, mentioned. as far as that was not in the that was not in the piece when they talked about the steroid trial was Linda McMahon being tipped off. And they did sort of mention, um, I think that that was, um, um, you know, um, Dave, Dave Shoemaker kind of mentioned, you know, like uh, um, jury tampering, which didn't there was no jury tampering. But as far as like um, witness tampering. You know, the allegation essentially that um, Laura Bavetti, um, who was one of Vince's attorneys, was secretly married to a guy who was, you know, had had come to um, um, Emily Feinberg, who was another major witness against Vince and, you know, basically was going to write a bio, you know, help her with a get. um you know, maybe a movie, you know, a movie series on her life or 
a book or whatever, but he was portrayed himself as, as a, a, a reporter for 60 minutes who was going to help her. And he was not a reporter for 60 minutes. And he actually portrayed himself to me as a reporter for 60 minutes, but it was his brother who was a reporter for 60 <laughs> minutes. I mean, during the whole thing, when this was going on, this is why, like in that case, like I, I know that, you know, like the, the Vince side and everything like that, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Right. Except they came to me, you know, the same guy came to me who was Laura Bavetti's husband talking to me all through this, you know, and it's just like when Laura Bavetti cross-examined Emily Feinberg, who was the strongest witness against Vince, I'm watching this going like, this woman has ESP. She knows <laughs> everything Laura, she knows everything that Emily Feinberg is going to say. How is this? And then months later after the trial, there was the article by uh, Jack Newfeld and Phil Nushnik where it's like, yeah, you know, um, Emily Feinberg was, you know, told her whole story and was being, you know, was thought she was going to be represented by this guy who was the husband of Vince's um, lead attorney or, you know, I mean, lead attorney because uh, Laura Bavetti was actually the lead attorney, not Jerry McDevitt. I mean, they were both, it was, it's, it was kind of equal, but, but Laura was the more intimidating and in some ways, the more impressive of the two. Jerry, Jerry was more impressive when it came to knowledge of steroids and tearing Gary Wadler, who was the um, the government steroid, you know, expert, tearing him up on the stand. Um, and, you know, their steroid expert, I mean, you know, and he had, he had helped the government win certain trials. And I was not impressed by him. I mean, I'd have, I'd have torn the same guy up. You know what I mean? I mean, he was just, he, he, he was not an expert. He was not an expert on this in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and that what you're talking about is uh, and we'll get to episode two, which was probably the, the best episode of the four. And yeah. sh what Shoemaker was basically saying is that after Vince gets off, that he sort of thinks of himself as kind of in, invincible and indestructible and a good person and what what happened is is like the, the the portrayal of what vince thought he was going to 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 be looked at it was the opposite people didn't see him as this conquering hero they just saw him as like this shady guy who got off um yeah. well i mean i mean he thought that he was exonerated in trial and he was not ex i mean if you were at the trial and i was at the trial he was anything but exonerated but they didn't have the goods to convict him and, and it never should have gone to trial because they didn't have the goods um you know, even 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 with the Emily Feinberg stuff, they still needed they you know, they needed that Zahorian was hired by Vince and not assigned. And he was going to be hired by Vince. And Vince, in fact, bought steroids from Zahorian and Hogan, in fact, bought steroids from Zahorian. They had full knowledge he was distributing steroids in, in the locker room, but he was assigned there by the um, Pennsylvania Athletic Commission. When the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission dropped assigning doctors and led to the, um, uh, you know, you know, the, the company WWF or or you know WCW whoever was going to run Pennsylvania, they could hire their own doctor. It was not assigned to them. So if Vince had hired the drug dealer um, to go into his locker room and deal drugs, um, you know, if that had happened, and it was going to happen, he was hired. And then Linda McMahon was told at a party by, um, you know, by certain people that uh, Zahorian's hot, stay clear from Zahorian. So they cancel Zahorian. He's not the doctor. He never do was a doctor at even one show because she got tipped off. If he was a doctor at even one show, uh, they, they, you know, I can't say 100% certainty they lost the case, but uh, I believe they would have. Yeah. And then that would have. And if that happened, you know, they kicked off USA Network. You know, it's my how all that is. The the the, the um, I guess now that that I brought that up, the fact of and they know, you know, and they know they knew this. I mean, they just I guess didn't feel the Brett contract, and they didn't feel the Linda getting tipped off was important enough. But to me, like in my mind, those are um, the Linda being tipped off is a giant part of the story mm -hmm. because it was what saved Vince in that trial the hogan um which they did go in, they did go into the hogan stuff and that was a, that was a, a key part of the trial too but the biggest thing was was linda being tipped off um and, and, and maybe then the this... other, and then the other thing with the um you know the the mushnik story you yeah. know about the um you know i mean they never talked about laura brevetti and, and her husband at right. all 
right in in that thing even though mushnick's there who wrote the exact story and the story you know that's a real story that that actually happened thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again